So I'm about to give you 10 years of mixing experience in the space of a few short minutes. That's going to help you to save years of frustration, time and struggle. If I knew these 10 things when I first started as a mix engineer and producer, my mixes would have improved so much faster, spread up my workflow and help my business to grow. Especially number 10, which I made, would have made me feel a lot better earlier on. Over the last decade, I've been grinding, putting in the work, late nights, early mornings, just to get to where I am today as a producer and mix engineer. So today my goal is to save you from all that trial and error, but be sure to stick around for all 10, because if you skip one, that might just be the one where you might either stay stuck or could be the one to help you to level up. Let's start off with air training. Just understanding frequencies is gonna help you so much when it comes to mixing. I spent time A, B in commercial releases and just mixing a lot of music so you get an understanding of what frequencies you're hearing and how it affects your overall mix, how it affects the vocals. It takes time, but it's worth it. So the second tip is using reference tracks. This leveled up my mixes so much because when you compare your mix, your music to what's already out there, it can have two effects. It can make you, it can make you feel disheartened because your music doesn't sound as, as good, as loud, as punchy, as clear as the reference. But then because you're holding it up against, because you're holding it up against a gold standard, you know what you're aiming for instead of spending hours trying to get your mix to sound right and you have nothing to compare it to. My favorite plugin for using reference tracks is reference. What you do is simply drop in your reference track and then you can just A-B it. Plus you've got the different meters to help you gauge whether your bass is too loud, if your high end's the same as the reference. So yeah, using reference tracks is key to leveling up your mixes. Number three, getting your mixes to translate. Might sound good in your studio, might sound good in your headphones when you're mixing and you think to yourself, yes, this is amazing. And then you do the dreaded car test and then you realize that it is absolute trash. Don't mean to sound harsh, but that's the reality. You play it in other places, maybe your phone and it sounds really top endy or harsh, brittle and harsh sounding. I've been there, don't worry. So by testing your mixes in different environments on different devices then you know what needs to be changed that along with using reference tracks and you should be able to get yourself into a nice ballpark of sounding like the music that you you hear that's out already so next up is number four i swear this is like this is something i've only just stumbled on and i really wish that i i, I was using it from before and that's gluing your mix using reverb like i've heard of it before but i, I took no notice of it and then by accident, I dropped a reverb plugin on my mix bus and it's, it was just like the, the missing piece to the puzzle. And since I'm going to do a whole video on that, on how to actually get the best out of it, because it, you can kind of ruin your mix if you, if you don't know what you're doing. But that there is for me an absolute, <laughs> and I would say it all the time, but for me, that was an absolute game changer. Moving on to number five, which is efficiency. Time is money. I had to learn to become more faster, more efficient, but without sacrificing quality. So I've done this by creating templates, mastering keyboard shortcuts, and having go-to chains for different instruments and vocal chains. Like, don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in tweaking your life away. Sometimes done is better than perfect. Which leads me on to number six, keyboard shortcuts. Learn your keyboard shortcuts. If you're not using shortcuts, then you're overthinking it. You're wasting time on things that you could just learn a shortcut for and speed up your process. Some of my favorite shortcuts are Control D to, to duplicate channels, um, the Fade Tool T plus I, your standard Command and C, Copy and Paste, Command and V. Uh, one of my favorites is T plus G, which gives you the game tool and if you watched my last mixing videos you would have seen when i'd first stumbled in it and how much it's really helped to speed up my workflow absolutely love that shortcut so let's talk about business the business side of being a mix engineer a producer number seven take deposits make sure you get a deposit because if you don't get a deposit like me you learn the hard way and you do the work send it out to the artist client and they'll disappear they'll vanish ghost You've done all the work, you've put the hours in and you're not getting paid for it. So by taking a deposit, it makes 
it shows that everyone is serious about getting the project done. It shows respect, it shows commitment. If an artist or client is part with their money invested in themselves, then chances are they want you to finish the work. Number eight, staying on top of your finances. So this is another thing that I've learned is so important to understand. And when I say numbers, I mean knowing how much money you've got coming in, knowing what your expenses are and how much profit you're making. You can be mixing tracks all day and night, but if you don't know what you're actually making after your expenses, are you really moving forward? Every time you get paid, put aside 20 or 30% for taxes. Doesn't sound fun, but this, this is the reality of running a business. So these are the things to keep an eye on, your income, your incoming, whether it's through mixing, through selling beats or some type of sponsors, sponsored video you've done, this is your incoming. Then you wanna keep an eye on your expenses. What are you spending your money on? What's your overheads? What are you buying for your business? Software, subscriptions, client meals, client hospitality. So once you subtract this from your incomings, you know what your real profit is. So your profit margins, this is when it gets real. This is where you get to understand what, you re what you're really making. Because it's all well and good thinking that you're killing it. But what really matters is what you're left with after your expenses. That's your profit. So the goal is to year after year for your profit to grow, which allows you to reinvest, to scale, to simply have financial security. So to keep on top of this, make sure that you're doing your bookkeeping. There's loads of apps out there that will help you to keep hold of your receipts and all that type of stuff. Or you can just be old school like me and just keep it in an actual bookkeeping book. I will eventually update to, to one of these apps. But for now, I'm good with the book. So one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is if you want to be successful long term, you've got to treat it like a business right from the start. That means taking your finances serious, seriously. That means saving for your taxes. That means registering your company, your business, whether you're self-employed or a limited company. Do some research and see what is best for you. So we spoke about business. Let's talk about your work, your actual work and backing up your work, which is number nine. I remember when I first started learning about music production and I was at college and one of the first things they said to me was or asked was if it doesn't exist in two places more than one place then it doesn't exist at all so it's important that you make sure you've backed up your work don't just have it on one hard drive or just on your main drive have a backup somewhere like a dropbox folder account or whatever any other solution that works for you my setup is quite simple i'm still i've got dropbox but i'm also looking into other ways of backing up my data i've got a time machine backup and i've also got my ssd which is more or less my main drive that i use or for my work but i'm also looking into getting another into other ways of backing up my work i've had a few comments on my max judo video and there's some really helpful and useful tips and ways on how to back up my storage so number 10 is handling client feedback like a boss. Feedback's not an attack on your skills. It's part of the collaborative process. I've sent mixes out and the feedback's come back that I'm not really feeling it, it's not my vibe. And in the past, I've just, I thought to myself, what are you talking about? This, is, this sounds amazing. You're just not hearing it right. But over the years, I've realized to drop the ego and listen to what the client has to say, because like I said, it's a co collaborative, it's a collaborative process by listening to your to the client, to the artist, it can actually help you to get out, step out of the box, try something new. They have a vision, they have an idea of how they want it to sound, so you have to respect that. And by doing that, you never know, you might create some of your, 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 best, mix, your best mixes, I know I have. The key is to approach this with an open mind. Instead of thinking, this client doesn't know what they're talking about. Instead, look at it like, what can I learn from this? So here's what I do when a client gives me some feedback and isn't 100% happy with their mix. Listen first, don't get defensive, don't explain yourself, just listen. They're paying you for a service, so they have a right to have it done the way that they want. Ask questions and get ask them to clarify. Sometimes artists don't know how to say exactly what they want and don't know the terminology of mixing like we do. It's not a bad thing and if they are unsure then you can tell them things ask them things like is it the tone is it the is it the sound of the vocals that sounds off for you just talk communicate be open but offer a solution and not an argument all you gotta do is just say yeah i hear what you're saying let's try with a little bit less reverb or let's get them kick sounding a bit more punchy or let's get the vocals sounding a bit more 
crisp and clear. And what this will do is show that you're open to feedback and focused on making the track better. So remember I said I had a bonus for you. Well, the bonus is just enjoy the journey. I know I say it all the time and you've probably heard it a lot. It sounds cliche, but it's, it's so true. Just enjoy the journey. When I first started out, it was all fun and exciting and quickly became exhausting. It became a struggle. It became confusing. It's easy to get frustrated when that happens, but when it gets like that, you just, you've got to push through because you'll come out the other side with a deeper understanding and things will eventually fall into place. Start to feel a bit more natural again. Just know that the learning and the growth is part of the process. Don't rush it. Don't look at someone else who's a little bit further than you, thinking, wishing that that it was you, because you get there. Every step, every mistake is bringing you closer to mastering your craft and running a successful business. These lessons took me 10 years to learn, but you just got them in a few minutes. If you apply at least one of them, your mixes and your business will improve. But just imagine if you apply all of them, you're going to save yourself a lot of time, effort, struggle frustration appreciate you for spending time with me in this video if you like this video at all got a few more tips that i can share drop a comment below and let me know see you in the next one